What's up Legionnaires and welcome back. We're here with another Rome 2 Siege Battle for you today and this one is a 2v2 sent in by one of the subs and a member of the Discord. So if you want to send in your own vids then that may then feature on the channel then do join the Discord. The link is down below. And I am told this is an excellent siege battle between the Seleucids, Pontus, Nabatea and Kush. They have the two desert factions Kush and Nabatea defending and Seleucids and Pontus attacking. So it looks like the Seleucids are making the first move, sending up their tortoises and siege towers towards the walls where Kush is defending. He's got his Kushite slave infantry defending first. So some pretty weak infantry, I guess, just to slow them down. And uh, so the archers or just the towers can soak up, uh, well, can just fire in and kill as many of these attackers as possible. Because he's attacking with like Thorax swords, so they're a pretty good unit. And to be going in with first. Um, this is on the map Marib, I'm pretty sure. So it's like somewhere in the desert. So you can see why there's a large sandstorm going on. Um, so, well, I can't apologize for the weather. It's just it's just how it is. I mean, a sandstorm just it happens in the desert, you know? You just got to live with it. But yes, yeah, so we have Navate defending this huge sort of uh, like ridge coming up here, I guess. Or like, yeah, track. And it is uh, with some Kushite sort um, of... Warriors. We've got some archers, I was going to say. And we have some uh, Ethiopian uh, cavalry. I was going to say archers, but they're not archers at all. These would not be archers. I've not seen these guys before. Usually people bring like the heaviest Kushite cavalry possible and leave it at that. We have Pontus setting up a very small detachment of Pontic swords to basically knock down a hole in the wall. And you've got a Eastern Ballista here focusing down all of these poor Pontic Swords. Definitely not a bad idea to shoot these guys down and kill as many of these Pontic Swords before they all, all the rest of them arrive. And he's making a wall of uh, siege towers to stop the rest of his army getting focused down. We have another one over here knocking down another bit of the wall. But he doesn't really have any problems with uh, this uh, area. He's basically just got to just get inside. It'll be fine. Nabate is allowing him to have the walls. We have some desert levy going up, but again, like there's a slave infantry for... Uh, Kush, they're not going to do very well. And to be honest, we don't see these lower tier units very often, but they do look pretty damn awesome. But yeah, so if you haven't already, I do recommend that you leave a like, subscribe, and a comment uh, to support the channel. Uh, we're trying to hit 1,300 subs by the end of the month. We're getting very close. So if you guys could help out support, it'd be much appreciated. And here we go. So we have Thorax swords onto the wall. We have slave infantry going up. They're going to slow these guys down. And we will uh, we'll see what happens. A siege and a sandstorm is what it basically is, isn't it? And we've got... Look at this. This is huge. Going to knock down some parts of the wall. We've already had one bit knocked down. We have some uh, Kushite troops getting ready to defend here. More Thorax swords getting ready to come in. We have some... Looks like we have some skirmishes as well. Some Peltasts. Oh no, these are Hillmen. Hillman. Okay, so some pretty cheap stuff coming in first. Not a bad idea. Imagine if they knock down the wall over here. Kill so many men. I mean, they kill quite a lot of their own as well, but they kill so many Kushite men. And it's definitely not worth doing. Their men are a lot more expensive than the Kush's troops up here. Probably why he put men up here. Uh, these guys up here. Like, he doesn't mind if he loses them. They're pretty cheap. Pretty awful. Oh. That man just lost a leg. But yeah, so it looks like... Uh, well, the Seuss is having no trouble really getting off the wall, onto the walls. And you might actually get off the wall here. Balance power is lo not looking good in favour of Kush and Navatea. But it looks like they are going to be defending that hill top defence for the most part. And here we go. So Pontus is also engaging down here. Only the Desert Levy. But they should win this fight. As Imagine fighting in this sandstorm. You just like mind your own business. And you get blinded by like a wind of sand or a gust of sand. It just blinds you. And then you get killed because you can't see what you're doing. So unfortunate. I guess that gives advantage to like Nabatea and Kush because they're used to this sort of weather. And they're like dressed appropriately. But yeah, there you go. I mean, yeah, there you go. They're just breaking now. I was about to say they, these desert levy won't hold long. But I mean, all they got to do is just hold up long enough so these towers and uh, the catapult can get enough damage done. Or the blister. And it's knocked down another ch chunk here. I wouldn't have done this. I mean, they obviously don't know about the cavalry in here. But this just gives the cavalry another way out. They don't need really another way out. They can just go out the gates. 
But that cavalry is going to be huge, and they definitely need to be using that to kill off uh, archers or skirmishers or any generals. But over here, it looks like Kush is doing okay. He's setting up a show to warriors as well, so some more sturdy infantry going up. Not armor show tools, but just a normal one. So, I mean, the Thorax should have an even chance against these guys. I'm pretty sure Kush has brought two units of the armored show to warriors, so he's got two tanky units. There is a lack of pikes from both sides, um, from what I've seen. Certainly, Seleucus hasn't brought any, and I don't believe uh, Kush has. I mean, Kush's pikes aren't that great, so Nabatea might be in charge of bringing the pikes. If any have been brought, but I haven't seen any so far. We have more Thorax swords trying to, like, just overwhelm this force on the wall. It's not really going to work. You can't really do that. Oh, actually, this Thorax sword unit is losing decisively. Wow. Um, and that one's not doing too great either. But over here, they've also come through the breach. They decided to come through. Some Hillmen coming through. These are some units that are so easy to break. They are definitely worth breaking. Oh, and artillery. Insane hits. Are these all been from artillery? Surely not. That's an awful amount of, like, show to warriors to lose. But there you go. So the show to warriors are going to have to engage all these hillmen. They've snuck through those ones over there. We have another line of engagement here. And these hillmen, they're just so lightly armored. They, they won't do that great. Oh. Chop him down. A battle. Carry on battling in the sands. You can hear more men coming in. Sounds like it might be... I don't know. It might be more show to warriors. Yeah, pouring in. They've beaten already one unit of hillmen. And the other one's about to go. This unit of show to warriors is... Uh, so they have a bit more of an issue. It's trying to fight on the wall and uh, off the wall. But I mean, the hillmen charge in and they're losing decisively. And this unit's just going to get surrounded in a moment. Um, so yeah, they kind of wasted three units there. I wouldn't have done that. I mean, they've got these... Plenty of Thorax swords out here, but they haven't got much melee infantry left. They've got a catapult left. They've got some Thoros spears. And no pikes, like I said. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what will happen. We do have uh, some Nubian spears here. They'll hold the line, but they're not pikes, obviously. Ah, we do have Nabatea and Thorax pikes. Excellent. So at least Nabatea did think to bring some pikes. And has he brought more pikes here? No, these are armored hot plates. More armor top plate. So only one unit of pike, I think, from the, all the defenders. But it's one more than the attackers bring a brought, I think. Oh, no, they got some levy pikes. Okay, they're pretty trash, but they'll do the job. We've got plenty of Thoros spears, levy pikes. Yeah. So just one unit of pikes from both armies. Like, combined armies, anyway. I mean, look at this. Pontus is now just setting up inside. He's got... He's probably got the harder job, I think. It's a single choke point. And it's a uphill challenge from quite literally. He's got to go up this huge hill. Um, and he's got to deal with like arch towers all the way. He's got cavalry here, which he doesn't yet know about. Kush has got his artillery piece all the way back here, ready in reserve. I would have put it possibly at this one. But that's going to be huge. I mean, Seleucus is having some rough times still himself. And he's not like fighting on multiple fronts. Kush is doing a really good job. Oh, that was a really good hit from the artillery there. Straight through this unit here. I mean, this show to the warrior units is getting beaten up. Another really good hit there. I don't actually think they're hitting any of the um, any of the Thorax swords. I think he's manly firing the Seleucid player. But look at all the Javis as well. They're mostly missing, but look at all those Javis. The sheer amount. Uh, quite a few are hitting here, actually. But this unit of uh, show to warriors is definitely beaten. Actually, there's two units in here. Wow. Two units of show to warriors, and they're going to get lost. Um... But they've done a lot of damage themselves, have the Kushite uh, forces in destroying the Seleucid, like, infantry. He's not got masses left. He's got lots of Thoros spears. His catapult's going to be huge. He wants to save as much time of that, of that as possible. But, I mean, if Kush can just, like, get a few of these units back, it'll be fine. Um, and he's kind of got troops over here helping Nabatea, you've got to remember. But he doesn't really want to commit too much more, otherwise he's not really got a lot to then defend against the Seleucids. I would pull back these show to warriors to be honest. I think this is this like whole defense is spent really. Maybe defend you could possibly defend this ridge here with one unit and to allow these archers to carry on firing. Like on these guys up here, because they're doing quite a good job. They're killing quite a lot of Thorax swords. It's probably why they're doing so well and winning this fight. Up here on the uh, on the wall.
archers over here. Look at all these Syrian archers are positioning themselves up, getting ready. They can't even see their target. They've just been told over the other side of this wall, there's a load of Kushite archers. Hit them, and uh, that will really help out the war, uh, the battle, and the cause. Yeah, it's just some archers. Not even like, not actually the unit Kushite archers, but just easy to call them Kushite archers, because that's what faction they're from. But yes, they're looking pretty beaten up. So. Yeah, they're, they're not looking so grand themselves. We've got Kushite Royal Guard here, so a really good general unit. Um, I don't actually know if the... I presume Kush can probably bring another general unit. Okay, so Pontus has found the cavalry here, the Pontic Royal Cavalry. This is not good. I would probably... Yeah, they're losing decisively. This one here, I'd get this one out and try and do some attacks on Pontus elsewhere. But, I mean, yeah, their trap's been sprung here. I mean, now Pontus is actually retreating. I don't know why. He's winning that fight. But this Ethiopian Cavs now is going to get, like, slowly killed off. They need some infantry over here. Trap this uh, general. Or some archers. That'll do a really good job. Yeah, just... Everywhere I'm looking, I'm just seeing, like, Ethiopian Cavalry dropping, Pontic Swordsmen, like, killing them. Well, I'd hope it would be Pontic Swords and the Ethiopians aren't just killing each other. But then it's Ethiopia, who knows? Could could be up to anything. Um, but yeah, so they look like they're going to lose. Uh, they're already routing. It's a real waste. I mean, I don't know if Kush was looking elsewhere. He quite possibly was. Um, but yeah, that Pontus... I mean, the Pontus General's actually not got out without a bit of being beaten up a bit. Got some desert levy going over, but it's a little too late. I mean, the cavalry is holding. It's still 44. They might get this desert levy in here. They might get these Nabataean swords in here. Pontus really needs to set up some of his own infantry. His general's way out on his own. We've got these Nabataean swords coming. They look pretty decent. Desert levy. Yeah, there you go. They're pulling out now. A little too late. And these uh, the cavalry's going to chase him down. Yeah, it's winded against active cavalry. I mean, it's a weaker unit there. Yeah, they're going to get caught. Surely. Yep, they've been caught. Every time they just retreat, they're going to lose men as well. Oh, this is a real cause for concern for Pontus. Pontus may lose his general here. If if uh, Kush keeps put doing this, this is definitely help. I was just seeing who holds that capture point. Okay, I thought Pontus would come over and take the capture point. Okay, yeah, they actually might be able to get this Pontic General. Oh my gosh. They did a really good job. Okay, they might need to send up some infantry now, Pontus. Yeah, he's sending up some Pontic Swords. Yeah, I mean, they're winning decisively uh, against this unit. If they got some infantry in there, they might have done a really good job. These two now need to get back and uh, defend their choke points. And there you go. The General is safe and sound, but he's down to so little men. So it's definitely possibly worth it. Um... Shame that both cavalry units were sacrificed to do it. They may have wanted to take out some Pontic archers or something like that, but who knows. But we've got Seleucids are basically cleared up over here. They've got all the uh, Kushite forward, pushed them all back. Kush has got very little in defense now. He's got Nubian spears, some archers. I mean, he's got Armatured Warriors. They should hold for a while against most of um, most of the like forces that the Seleucids come bring to bear. They've also got this catapult of the Sluices, which is now firing. It's firing into all these archers down. It's actually doing an okay job. It's getting a couple of kills here and there. If they carry on blobbing up. That's a really good idea. I'd probably just start taking out these uh, Thoros spears because if they take out all the like the millet, like all their uh, infantry, just making them incapable of doing anything, that's a really good thing. Like the archers are fine. They probably fired quite a bit of ammo up, uh, in supporting taking out those Kushite archers. Oh, that was a good hit. But, I mean, there's not much else you can fire at currently, so. Why not fire at these guys, I guess? They've got a lot. Nabatea's barely engaged, so. And neither is Pontus, so, I mean. Kush and Seleucids might want to take it a bit slower. Certainly, Seleucids, if he wants to wait for his allies to then push up and actually attack. But, I mean, Pontus does have to think about how he's going to do this. I think his Pontic swords could probably break through these Nabataean swordsmen. Um. But it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough to tell. I mean, he's got a lot of interesting units, put it like that. In the way that I, they're just 
Ponzas is great, but it's not a high tier faction. It's not got great stuff. His pikes will be really good. And I'm sure he's going to leave them as the last unit to go up because, I mean, you would. He's also just letting his men get focused down here, which is not a bad idea. They can shield wall, but I mean, they do have like the high advantage, so they're just shooting over and killing these men anyway. Like, the shield wall's not really helping. They're just getting shot anyway. Just just go in. Like, lose. look how many men this unit's lost. It's at 130 about two seconds ago. Just go in. Go in. Two units should surely break these Navitane swords. Also, then you're just denying the archers a good angle to shoot your men. And they risk sh doing friendly fire. It's just an idea. But here we go. We have some Pontic swords going in here. They're going to take out this unit of Navitane swords. Not a bad idea. But they do have to remember that this armored desert hoplite could come around and surround them. Here we go. Navitaean swords against Pontic swords. Let's find out who's better. Some Eastern Hellenic faction. Or, or some desert boys. Oh, and there's a volley coming in. You can just sight, kind of see at the top of the screen as a volley comes in. And that's going to focus down those Pontic swords very nice. Look at that guy there. He's just rocking an arrow in the back. He doesn't care. doesn't give two dams about his... Oh, but he's dead now. Oh, rip in peace. Quite a lot of... Pontic Swords dropping now. Some good volleys. Archers are really, really good for, like, indirect fire. Something you see more in Attila, I think, because when because you don't have crossbows in Rome 2, so you can't really see the difference. But then when you're playing with, like, in Attila and you have crossbows against archers and in a siege, you can really tell who will come out on top and it will be the archers. Um, so there you go. So Nabataean Swords have beaten the Pontic Swords with the help of the archers. Um, he did bring the Navitane Heavy Archers, which are a really good, strong unit. And they're the most elite unit that they can bring, but they are still pretty cheap. They're only like 500. I mean, archers generally are pretty cheap. Uh, apart from like possibly mercenary Cretan archers and Rhodian slingers. But look at this. Look at this unit. It's just been focused down. That is awful. Look at all these poor men just dead, dying. And it's going to happen to the same to this one here. I can just hap hear it happening just behind. And Pontus just needs to make a decision. Is he going to assault? Is he not? He's got plenty of men. Oh, that's horrifying. Look at that poor guy down there. He's just slowly dying. Look at this guy. He's having the same feelings. But yeah, there you go. That unit's broken just for nothing. And he's going to send this unit back up. I'm pretty sure this was the unit on the right-hand side. He Best way would be certainly to attack here. You're going to lose men. That's the thing. They're going to have so many... You're going to have to send up your own archers with your own infantry. Get his archers to shoot your archers. So your infantry can just engage uh, without any problems. And here we go. So it looks like the sluices are already going to come in over here. Nubin spears defending against Thoros spears. This is not a good idea from sluices. Because Pons is being so passive in attacking. That... Um, He's attacking on his own, and Navate could just send forces back to help Kush quite happily. We have Armature to Warriors already in here. We have Nubian Spears. We have just a load of Thoros Spears. They're forming their square formation. So they've attacked and then decided to make, make a defensive formation. Same here. Um, not the worst idea, I guess, and you've been countercharged by Armature to Warriors. But not the best. I mean, see, you can already see Navate is bringing forces over. I think there's some Navatane swords or something. Oh no, these are the Navitane Axe Warriors. So not a bad unit either. They have military capability. They have two units up here. And he's just bringing more back. Because he can. Because uh, look at this. Pons is just being so passive. He's finally engaged. He's finally engaged. But I guess because Navitane sent troops back. But he's wasted like two units just to archer fire. Which they could have been then killing some Navitanes themselves. So Pons is making a bit of headway, but uh, not really much. I mean, this unit is losing. So Pontic Swords should really, in head-on, beat 
uh, Nabataean swords. And see, he's brought up his archers. They're now causing a lot of problems. This uh, Nabataean heavy archer unit obliterated. All you need to do, just focus one unit down at a time of archers. And he'll kill this unit off really quickly. There you go, broken instantly. Now we can move on to the next. I mean, he's got plenty of archers left. This would be a great time if Pontus had, like, a solid unit of cavalry. If they could break through this one unit here of armed hot desert hot plights, just to uh, get around and get all these archers. But that hot plate shouldn't have come out of that choke point. It's a really good choke point. Um, and they got the benefits from being in that hot plate wall. Yeah, the Pontic Swords were going to throw some javelins at you, but in the long term run, you probably would have done fine in that wall. We've seen in other battles that these uh, guys are not that great. These armoured desert hot plights are not that great. But, I mean, they're against lower tier, like, units this time. It seems like the cost for this army is a lot less. I don't know what the, uh, like, the limit of cash was, but it clearly isn't as high as some of the other ones. And so they should be able to do okay. These Pontic Swords are okay. They're, like, not too expensive, but they're, they're pretty mid-tier, I'd say. Pretty mid-tier. How is the Seleucus doing? Um, not right, not great. I would say uh, I wouldn't say there's much headway, especially since uh, Nabateus has been throwing in Axe Warriors as well, which are doing just fine. Does seem like a bit of chaos going on in here, but that does look really nice. Very nice chaotic battle. The lines are all merged together. Excellent. There we go. These Thor uh, Thorax swords, sorry, are probably going to win their combat. There, they look like they've they're repositioning. These apparently they're pretty beaten up, but they still got 110 odd men. And I can hear the catapult firing. Oh, it's getting some good hits. I mean, it's firing to the reserve at these armor church warriors. Not a bad idea. They pulled back both of their units to allow like the Nubian spears and the Nabataeans to do most of the heavy lifting. Not a bad idea. Save these elite units. Don't risk them just uh, being focused on by artillery. I'd definitely pull this unit back to probably where the Nabataeans are. But it's turning into a good old grind battle now. I mean, I don't know if... Where are the Seleucid archers and have they got any ammo left? They certainly have got ammo because they've got their bows out. The catapult's still coming up. This is huge. This is going to get it really close and just focus on. Look at this. If you thought that the uh, sandstorm was ever going to end, no. No, it's it's going on forever. We've got some archers, some small units of archers focusing down. Uh, just into this blob. They'll do a little bit of hurt, but not much. God, this sandstorm. It's kind of beautiful. I just, I just like the colours and like of the sky and just like the sand in it, but I mean... It's a bit annoying for visibility. I mean, it's not that bad. Get in nice and zoomed in and you don't really see it. These poor men clearly aren't affected by it. Oh, volleys coming in here from the Eastern Archers. Of Pontus. Just doing devastating work. Now we have some desert hot plates still holding the line. These Pontic swords are making a big... Uh, I mean, making some... Big pushes here. Look, you can see where the fighting started, and they're slowly working their way up this hill. They're costing them a lot of men, though. That's why they didn't really want to waste any men just standing there getting shot by archers. They need the archers also really need to keep focusing down their uh, opponents' archers, these heavy archers. I'm sure they're getting close to being out of ammo now, having focused on a lot of other stuff. But who will see? I mean, just look at that. The archers here with the dark sky behind looks awesome. It's sunny, yet not. Like, the armor's gleaming and looking really nice. But it's not technically sunny, because it looks so dark. It's the desert. It's always sunny. Mm. 
the helmets as well. They've got like the rams on, like ram uh, horns, I guess you call them, on like the helmets. I was trying to think what you call them, and I just couldn't think of the word. It's just horns. Nothing special, just about a ram having something on its head, just a horn. Uh, but yeah, there you go. Pontic Swords now wavering and about to break. They're going to have to send in some fresh units, and they are running out. They're running out. They've only got three units of melee infantry that haven't engaged. So it's got some Thoros spears, got some levy pikes. They're having some difficult times with the attackers. I'd say that the defenders are doing just fine, to be honest. I mean, Salus is certainly making some pushes, but... Like, he's got past the uh, arch towers to start with, but only just. And they have been neutralized, that's good. This unit here of Thoros, uh, Thoric Swords needs to just like push in, just to allow the uh, like the next units behind. Like what have we got here? We've got a pretty fresh unit of Thoros spears. Get this unit in behind. But I mean, Kush has realised and he's making the uh, fixing this hole, and he's going to send in the uh, armor turtles to deal with a small unit of Thorax. Poor guys, forming shield wall, but that won't stop them. Chop them down. Chop them down. Oh, the artillery. I can hear it. Where is it firing? Oh, here. Right here. Dead in the center. This artillery is going to have to do some work. It's going to have to really do some work. I mean, it looks like it is. It's knocking over a lot of guys. Oh, another one. These armor shirts warrior units. They're certainly trying to just push the, their way through. And they are actually doing it. They're trying to get to the artillery crew. And they will. They're engaging them now. They're going to have to send through those Thoros Spears. Royal Peltas will have to go forward. Archers, if they're out of ammo, need to go forward. I mean, Kush is pretty spent, but he's got the support of Nabatea, which is really helping him. Nabatea over here looks like he's doing okay. Holding off quite well. I mean, he's losing, actually, decisively in both of these units here. If they run out of ammo, though, soon, the defenders, they'll be in trouble. Because if they've run out of ammo soon, then um, the attackers take slow it down a bit. And then they can focus down some of these units and they can just kill them off. Oh, chopping them down. Yeah, these Pontic Swords are still having a really rough time getting through this choke point. Broken another unit, though, of Nabatea. And on it goes, and they're celebrating, so clearly they've won. I think they've broken this unit, yet yeah. They are in trouble. They're going to have to send in some some uh, archers. That is not good. They are actually pretty low now. It's going to be coming down to these Thorax Pikes, which they're definitely going to have to focus down as Pontus. He's better have saved some ammo for them. He can't see them, but they are there. They're very much there. So, yeah, look at this. Now they're going to get surrounded, these uh, noble swordsmen. These poor guys, one of the... They're pretty trash when you're playing with Nabatea, like against high tier units, but they actually probably do okay. Oh my gosh! I just got focused down and like with Javis. So many of them just got porcupined. And there we go. Those guys are probably gonna break anytime soon. They're yeah, unit losing. They're trying to pull out. Um, there's no way they can get back in time. There's another unit of Pontic Swords here. This would have been when they wanted the cavalry. Get the cavalry up. Chase these uh, Nabate and Heavy Archers down as they retreat. We've got Pikes coming up. They'll hold the line for a bit. Now you need to get your Eastern Archers up to start focusing these guys down. They have two units of... Oh, they have Axe Warriors. They have some Noble Swords of their own. They're bringing back Axe Warriors as well. Possibly because the Sluices is finished, the... Catapult is basically basically done, I think. Oh, no, they have got crew left. Okay, they're going to have to send in, like, everything and anything now to hold these guys back. It is coming down to the wire. The bounce power has moved slightly in favor of the defenders, I'd say. But it's still very close. If any of those archers have ammo left, they should really be firing their ammo. Focus down these uh, armor shows warriors. They are literally all that's holding back all these men. The catapult needs to like start manually firing to make sure you just hit everything that's like definitely an enemy or Kush in this case. 
Not necessarily enemy. If you're rooting for Kush, good for you. Let me know in the comments. Are you rooting for the defenders or are you rooting for the attackers? If you got this far, let me know. I want to, do, I want to know whether you guys are all about the desert factions or all about the Hellenic factions. Kushite Royal Cavalry here getting focused down. That's not good. I mean, I don't think they'll do enough damage. They'd be better off these uh, archers shooting down the uh, show to warriors. The general's not going to make a difference. I mean, he might, but... Better still to just kill that those armor shows. They're gonna do more damage. Especially when there's over 150 of them left. Look at that. It's kind of a nice nice view. You see like the lines, the gold here, representing Kush, and then the silver of the Seleucids. Did Pontus engage? No, he's still working his way up. Pontus is basically where the last strength of the attackers is. I wouldn't have sent this unit of uh, Navate and Axe Warriors out here if I was Navate. This unit's just going to die if it stays out here. Mix it in with the pikes is not the worst idea in the world, though. I mean, they've got some archers here, but mix these guys in with the pikes. These not Axe Warriors. No, they'll do okay. They've got some shields in to protect those pikemen. But we have uh, Noble Swords breaking here. We have the General, though, Force Loose is dying. Uh, well, breaking. He's not quite dead. He's pushed his way through. He's actually getting surrounded by Kush, and there we go, I think he's gone, yeah, that's him there, this unit here, breaking, so that's probably Seleucid's finish, I don't know if the Capo has any ammo left, I believe not, I think they've been focused down, and he's just got archers left, so that is a real concern, Seleucid's need to really just pull back, harass with their archers, they've clearly got a lot of ammo left, get these men back. Yeah, that's all they got left. They need to make sure these guys get back and just safe. Um, they're very tired, though, against tired, tired, steady, and fresh. Yeah, I mean, these guys should get out of there in time, but it doesn't look like they're going to. Yeah, they're going to catch them. That's a real concern for the Seleucids. Pontus, now sending his troops up. He's going to engage these Axe Warriors. Smart idea. He's going to engage with a small unit, then surround with the larger unit. That'll break these guys nice and quickly, and then it might force the pikes to come out of the uh, out of their choke point. Here we go, surrounding the axe warriors. Chop these guys down. Pontus is uh, doing an excellent job. I mean. He started off pretty rough, but he's slowly whittling down Navate. I mean, Navate is allowing him to, though. He's, like, just sacrificing this Axe Warrior unit. I mean, it's a bit silly. I'd keep it inside the gates at this point, or inside the walls. Um, yeah, I was about to say, Pontus sends that unit, though, in there. That's not a good idea. Just surround these Navate and Axe Warriors. He's actually getting some breaking another unit of Pontic Swords. And Pontus is going to need every infantry unit he can get. Especially now Kush is basically freed up. Oh, man being tipped over the shield. Excellent. Oh, again. The Nabate and Axe Warriors love tipping men over their shields. But, I mean, it's not enough tipping men over your shields. It does show off your strength, but it's uh, not enough to hold the line. So, I mean, now is going to be the interesting point. Can these Levy Pikes break through the Thorax Pikes? They're very heavy against heavy. I don't know. With the support of Archers, if Ponce has got any Archers left, he does not. What happened to all his Archers? That's huge. Okay, so, I mean, Pontus has no archers left. It, clearly, they were focused down. It's going to be hard for him to break through this. Those archers might be needed just to focus down the pikes before you send your own pikes in. He's setting up more Navate and Axe Warriors? What is he doing, Navate? Just keep your men inside the walls. Unless they were just like... Oh, no, he is. Okay, he is. He's putting them just behind. But what we've got here, we've got Kush's uh, general just riding down Seleucids. Not a bad idea. 
chopping these men down. Ah. Excellent. You can see the sun in the top of the screen. Clearly it's still it's still sunny even though we've got a sandstorm. Like I said, it's always sunny in the desert. You can have a dark sky and sandstorm, but the sun will still shine through. And there we go. Seleucids is off the map. They are gone. Kushite General has done his job and uh and captured the t and taken them out. I mean I don't know how the tower is still saying it's Seleucid. The Seleucids are gone. They have no power left here. But I mean, let's see. Nabataean Thorax Sword, uh, Thorax Pike, sorry. We have uh, Nabataean Heavy Archers. They're just focusing down, yeah, Pikes, which are looking the wrong way. That's not a good start. I don't know if Pons just thrown in the bag or whatever. I mean, he had a good chance. He could have broken through. These Levy Pikes might have been able to do the job. With some uh, sword support, they could have done the job, possibly. But he's now just falling back. Yeah, he's clearly realized his Pikes can focus down. If uh, Seleucids had just been a bit more patient and not attacked uh, before, then this, then Pontus might have had a chance. But look at Balance Power now. Defenders are looking really good. But yeah, so I think uh, what I'd take away from this battle, if you're uh, trying to learn what to do in like Rome 2 sieges, you're new to them or something, don't attack without your ally, like supporting on the other side. If you all, like you've got an ally and you're attacking in a siege, wait for him. Make sure you all attack at the same time. So the defenders don't can't just focus down on one side. Like Nabate was able to send over for troops to help Kush. Kush was low on troops. Lucy did an excellent first job at destroying most of his army here on the wall. And he had like artillery left, he had archers left, and more infantry. All he needed to do was just wait at the bottom of this hill. Uh, and just wait until Pontus was ready to get, come up this hill after beating Nabate, and then he could have attacked as well. At the same time, and then Nabatea would have had to keep as many of his troops over here to stop Pontus breaking through. And that would have cost them the Kush side, more than likely. Or it would have made it harder anyway. But instead, now they've just got to focus down against one side, which is Pontus. And it looks like with the timer about to run out, it looks like Pontus might just throw in the bag here. A real shame if it does, because it's been an excellent battle, and it has come down to a very small amount of troops left. It's come down to about six units of Pontus, and about... Well, six units of Nabatea and a couple of units of beaten up Kush units. But that's about it. That is literally all that's left. A real shame. And the general's coming around now on his own. He's going to just do his own little thing. So we'll just fast forward for the sake of it. There's no real need to just watch this as nothing happens. So yeah, it looks like the Kushite Royal Carry's going to come around. Snipe maybe the general? I, actually, I don't think it's going to have time to do it. It's just surrounding everything. And there you go. A costly victory. Clearly, uh, Sodomy Defender just threw in the bag and just couldn't be asked to finish it. Which, that's fair enough. So, we have Goose, who was playing as Nabatea. We'll look at him first. Um, so, Nabatea and Heavy Archers, 335 kills. Look at them. Insane. 140, 146, 140. For, uh, 54, excellent. And the armored desert hoplites are both getting over 100, so they both actually did okay. Desert levy, yeah, better not to speak of them, they didn't do that great. Um, Nabataean swords 151, not bad. Axe warriors 76, not terrible. Noble swords getting 129, actually did worse than any of the Nabataean swords um, did. And then the pikes didn't get any kills because they didn't get into battle in time. Then we have stop it, it, it is, it, it's really okay. Stop it's really basically. I'm just gonna say. Uh, he's playing his Kush. Uh, we have Kushite Royal Cavalry or Royal Guard, 136 kills, most of them archers at the end there. Armor shows warriors both getting over to 200. I expected this, they're very solid elite units. Then we have Show to Warriors, all of them getting over 100. Again, pretty solid units that'll do really, really well. And there's um Kush his arch is actually 156, which is not bad at all either. And then we have Themingin. Uh, who's playing as the Seleucids, 152 kills with his uh, Seleucid Royal Peltasts. Um, we've got Syrian Heavy Archers getting 116 kills, not bad at all. Thorax Swords, 237 and 226, excellent. 206 with Sora Spears, not bad at all. His Hillman just weren't worth bringing. Bear bringing just like some more elite units. Um, or maybe some cavalry, that might be really useful. And then some Sodomy uh, Defender who's playing as Pontus. Still had a fair few units that were fresh. Um, which he could have just sent in. He had a chance. He just needed to 
these two just needed to attack at the same time. But his archer's getting 100 kills, his general getting 171. Um, his pike's apparently getting 11 kills, but I never really saw them engage. Um, his pontic sword's getting 198 and 231. They're probably the best units there. And that's kind of it. So, I mean, he did okay, but yeah, he just in the end just couldn't be... Didn't have the heart to try and break through that final line. But anyway, guys, if you enjoyed this siege battle, please do leave a like, subscribe if you're new around here, and leave a comment um, to show your appreciation for the channel. I appreciate all the comments, and I read them all, and uh, try to reply to as many as possible as well. And until next time, Legionnaires, I will see you guys later.